What is up, my friends? I'm on a drive again, little car chat. <laughs> I thought I would talk about how to make the fat loss game easier. Uh, kind of like tapped in. I'm like, what do they need? What do they need? So I wanted to share with you guys some of my best tips for making the fat loss game easier. Okay, because I'll be honest with you, I don't want anybody to feel like they need to be tracking all their food for the rest of their life and it be this like miserable, hard thing. I mean, how many of you feel like the fat loss thing is this daunting, miserable, horrible thing that's going to suck? I feel like that's the attitude that most people have about fat loss. And there are some things, some mentalities and some strategies that you can have that will make it a lot easier. So the first thing I've noticed, I mean, I, like it may sound obvious, but the first thing I've noticed is that people who have a hard time with fat loss don't have a consistent time on the daily that they dedicate to exercise. E exercise then becomes this chronic stressor of something I need to be doing that I'm not doing, something I need to get to, something I need to squeeze in. It becomes this optional thing of like, yeah, I'm not doing that today. So that's the first one. If that's the boat that you're in, if exercise, some sort of dedicated time in your day to working out is this optional thing in your mind is going to be really hard. Because in our day and age, with food abundance, it is so easy to eat more than you need. And we are so sedentary. They even consider most professional athletes to be sedentary because of the time of day that they spend sitting. So when you fill out your little My Fitness Pal thing and you're like the active one, like, not really. I mean, I work out every day, but the rest of the day, I'm generally just sitting on my butt, right? So if you have not made a consistent pattern where it's like brushing your teeth, it's not a question. That's the first thing that has to be established. If you are not moving, it's going to be so freaking hard. You can, you can lose weight without exercising, without moving on the daily, but it's so much freaking easier <laughs> if you have this set in your life. What's up, Isaac? Good to see you, bro. So that's got to be like a consistent thing that happens on the daily instead of this stressor, I'll squeeze it in when I can. Okay, so what's your time going to be? How can you make that a consistent thing in your life? Yeah, let these MFs know. <laughs> Thanks, Isaac. Okay, second thing is if in your ex within that exercise, you're always doing the same thing. Guess what? You already adapted to that. It's not going to make much of a change. So if you only go to Zumba or you only go to Pilates or you only do the same freaking weightlifting routine every single time, it's not going to be much of a, uh, your body's adapted to that. So you got to switch it up. Okay. The second thing is walking. You got to walk. You got to move. Some sort of low intensity. That makes it a lot easier. Lately, I have been walking probably, honestly, like almost an hour daily. What am I at? steps wise. I'm at 12,000 steps today at four o'clock, which is honestly kind of low for me. I'm usually somewhere between, I don't know, 13,000 on a low day to like 20,000, somewhere in that window. So if you're wearing any sort of, this is a Fitbit sense. If you're wearing any sort of tracker with steps and you're like 3000 steps a day or something, it's going to be real hard. So you got to find a solution for that. So figure it out ahead of time. Instead of it being this stressor thing where it's like, I got to get to that at some point today. That sucks. <laughs> Anything in my life that's a, I'll get to that at some point today, and it's not going to happen consistently. No freaking way. Like, do you do that with brushing your teeth? I got to get to it at some point today. No. <laughs> There's a flow. I wake up and I brush my teeth. So, like, movement needs to become like that, too. I got to make time for it. And, like, be realistic with yourself. And what needs to happen? What needs to shift around so that you can make that time for yourself? That's the first thing. I've definitely recognized, like, most people, there's no consistency in that. And the people that I do see at the gym every freaking morning, guess what? They're in real good shape. It's not It's not a thing that they, like, it's not a stressor for them anymore to spend that time. It's just what they do when they wake up. Right? They've, like, modeled their life around it. Okay. So if you're not moving very much, if you do not have a consistent exercise routine, like, good luck. 
Okay, second, let's talk about food. So, understanding principles, when you understand principles, it makes it easy for you to make that happen wherever you are. I do not prep meals. That is not my style. I'm not ever doing that. But I do think ahead. I do make sure that I have the things that I need that fit the principles that I know work for healthy body composition maintenance. So protein is the macronutrient that is, I call it when a when a chicken dinner because it is unlikely to be stored as body fat. It helps you make neurotransmitters. It helps you make collagen, every cell in your body. And it's very, very, very satiating. So protein is a priority in my life. And so is fiber. Fiber is not caloric. It's not an energy source. Neither of these are energy sources. So when you're eating a lot of protein and fiber, do you see what that, do you know what energy does excess energy? You know, where do you find excess energy on your body? Fat source. Okay. So fat and fat and carbs are energy sources. So if you're eating a diet that's low in protein and low in fiber, you're eating almost all energy. It's real easy to overdo it. <laughs> And then you get fat stores. So you shift into saying, I need more protein. I need more fiber. Either or or and is even easier. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, your body composition starts changing. So when I work with people and I boost up their protein, what do I hear? Oh, that's going to be hard to get that much protein. Yeah, stimulus change. Now your body composition is going to change. If it feels the same, it's going to stay the same, right? <laughs> So protein and fiber is the ticket. So just make a priority for that, right? Okay. And as many whole foods as possible from nature, just push for it. How can you make them taste good? Because honestly, if all we had was food that grew in nature, I would be out of a job. <laughs> yeah. And not a single one of us would need help losing weight because you're not going to overdo it on potatoes and broccoli and steak. <laughs> Okay, so that whole foods from nature, understand that protein and fiber are the ticket and they help with your mental health. The, the tyrosine and tryptophan help you make dopamine and serotonin can help with your gut lining too. the, the proteins, amino acids make everything in your body. And that's what protein is. It's just a string of amino acids. So that understand that. Okay. Next thing, stress. Let's talk about it. Bunch of y'all got high cortisol and high blood sugar from having so much freaking stress all the time. So if your life stress is really high, what are you doing about it? You're just going to sit there and continue to just be stressed out of your mind? It's a victim mindset. Yep. Yes, it is. And I will be brutal about it because I hope if I'm brutal enough about it... <laughs> Maybe you'll take a look at it because none of us like to be sitting there thinking we're in a victim mindset. But if your life is stressful as hell and you're just enduring it, we got to get solutions focused about that. What do you need to say no to? Do you have an endless to-do list that you never complete, that you just feel stressed out of your mind and you never give yourself time to just go and calm? and just be and have fun and go outside and play and do fun stuff. Like if most of your daily, like weekday life is just stressful out of your mind, what are you doing about it? This is one of the main things that I see in clients who are overweight and can't seem to lose weight. We get into it. They're stressed out. They're the two biggest stressors. Well, probably three. The first one is stress about their health. Stress about their body, stress not feeling good enough, feeling good about good enough, good about themselves, being putting immense amounts of stress on how they look. Guess what? If all your health goals are based on how you look, you will never, ever, ever, ever get to a place where you're fully happy with your body because the, the, the finish line keeps moving fun times. And it's really, that's when you get into all this like binge eating, I got to get donuts and all this crazy crap because all of your stuff is focused on this restrictive mindset of I got to be better than I am. I got to, it's none, it's so disconnected. What's up, Joe? <laughs> you love having fun in nature. Yes. 
healthy AF. So when you're focused on how I feel, like close your eyes, how do I feel in my body? How do I want to feel in my body? And that makes it so freaking easy to make decisions that are in your own best self-interest. Health is about how you feel, not about how you look. The look will come as a result of focusing on I love me and I deserve to feel better and I want to feel better. You'll also take a rest day or get more sleep and all of those things that are conducive to getting the (laughs) aesthetic results that you're after because you're in the energy of self-love and I want what's best for me. And donuts, it's like, yeah, I can have them. But I don't really want that because I don't really love how I feel after eating a bunch of donuts. I'd rather have something I feel better. And guess what? Now you got like better eating habits naturally because you are focused on how you feel, not how you look. That is the biggest freaking problem in health and fitness right now is this like ridiculous obsession with how we look. And if that is the train you are on, it is going to take you to hell. I don't care how freaking fit you get, some of the most miserable people I know in their relationship with their body also look the fittest. So start focusing on how you feel, the decisions get easier, and the results just come because your body is less stressed and it can flow properly. Like your thyroid, your cellular function, your gut, all of it. The next biggest stressor that I see is work stuff. So like, what the heck, what are you going to do? What do you need to do with your work stress? I'm going to leave it to you. You're going to have those answers are going to come from inside you, but sit your ass down and meditate. Be like, what do I ask? What do I need to change here? Maybe you need to change your attitude. Maybe you hate everybody at work. That's really stressful. Hating everybody at work is really stressful. So maybe read Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff. (laughs) Start getting some compassion on yourself and you might have more compassion for everyone around you. Maybe you're scared to speak your voice, you know, and I have compassion on that because it's probably from childhood. You didn't feel like you could or whatever, but work on that communication. Speak up. Maybe you got to work on boundaries and learn how to say no to things instead of blaming my boss always asks me to do too much. We'll speak up. Let them know. Whatever it is for you, that work stress stuff has got to be addressed and not just like endured as a victim that hates their job. You can find solutions to get rid of the work stress and they're going to have to come from inside of you. That's a big one. What do I not like about this? What is actually the problem? It's hard to solve a problem that you don't know what the problem is. So you got to like dive into it a little bit. And then you got to get solutions focused and turn all those fingers this way in. <laughs> okay. Um, the third one is relationships. So the biggest thing that I've seen be helpful in relationships for my clients is working on themselves. The more you work on yourself, Having compassion for yourself, love for yourself, kindness for yourself, all of those things. Relationship problems start to resolve themselves. You get boundaries, you get better communication, you have more compassion on other people. All of those solutions come as you improve your relationship with yourself. Um, I, I, yeah, <laughs> 100%. Okay, so we've hit, you got to get your butt moving every day. Even if it's just walking, something and there has to be a dedicated time for it or it just becomes a stressor. And there's no way, man, there's no way you can be in a healthy place completely if you're not moving on the daily. Like sometimes when I go on trips, I can't, you know, like it's just, it's not gonna happen. It's very rare. It's very rare that I do that. I'll flow with it if it feels right. But I mean, even at my retreat last weekend, I was driving, I was getting up at 4.30 in the morning to drive half an hour to go to a gym and come back. And I know damn straight I was the only person there that did that. (laughs) So I'm pretty freaking dedicated. Why? Because I love it. I love it. I love that time with myself. What's up, Shona? My beautiful friend. Yeah, you're the master of me. Exactly. We are creating everything in our life, whether we want to admit that or not. We're not victims. So if we're not enjoying our life experience... We got to go in here. We got to take a mirror and put it right on our face and be like, what's going on here? What do I need to change? Is it my attitude? Is it my, the way I'm looking at things? Do I need to actually mechanically change some things in my life? Okay. 
And then food, real food, protein fiber, real food, protein fiber. Another one I will add real quick is stop eating a few hours before bed. If you were eating late at night, freak dude, you're like, in my opinion, you're taking years off of your life because you cannot repair your body properly in sleep when you're trying to digest food in a story period. And if you get used to this flow and you stop eating late at night and then you do one time, you will become very aware of what I'm talking about because you feel like shit the next day. Promise. Try it. Try not eating a few hours before bed for like two weeks and then do it one night. See how you feel the next morning. You will understand from a place of knowing it will change you forever. And you'll go to bed earlier because you didn't just energize yourself with with a bunch of food at 9.30 at night, and now you're not tired because you just ate a bunch of energy. It is so important. So I like intermittent fasting personally, which means for me, that's usually, I mean, I'm more apt to eat earlier in the day than like if I'm gonna eat outside of my normal, I don't have like a set time with it, but generally I'm eating between like 11 and six, something like that kind of pretty typical for me but if I'm gonna go out of that it's gonna be earlier in the day not later very very rare for me to eat later I will sometimes if I'm like camping or something we didn't get dinner but you know it's, it's a rare occasion I'm not like psycho about it but it's very rare um that I eat late at night so that's a big one um nutrient density like when your body has the nutrients it needs it's not searching for them in food and your cellular function goes up, all the systems in your body start thriving, and then your metabolism is just becomes more optimized, okay? So, like, it's not bad to eat burgers and fries and pizza and cookies and cupcakes and all that stuff. It's just, like, you're doing yourself a disservice because now you're full on that stuff when you could have gotten full on things that have a bunch of nutrients in them that keep your body thriving, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, like, a more mature mindset, of honoring this freaking cool vehicle that your soul is in, giving it what it needs so it can thrive and make your whole life better. And then tackling that stress, baby. What are you going to do about it? Okay, last one is sleep. <laughs> sleep. Some of you have heard me say it. I'm tempted to write an ebook called The Sleep Diet. <laughs> I lost almost 20 pounds during COVID. It was like something like 17 pounds. I was like, dude, I am getting lean AF. I was not going to the gym. I was just walking around the lake by my house morning and night and sleeping like crazy. Right? I was like, I have nowhere to go. There's really not much to do. So I'll just sleep a whole bunch. It was insane. My hunger went down so much, probably from the lack of training too, right? Weight training and sleeping so much that I like drifted into one meal a day a lot of those days because I just literally was not hungry. I was like, this is insane. Sleep regulates all your hormones. Sleep does everything. It repairs your entire body, your brain, your gut, your muscles, tissues, all of it. So if you want to thrive and you're in that sleep when I'm dead thing, <laughs> you're just going to be dead a lot earlier. Okay? Sleep is huge for fat loss. Very, very effective. So these are the principles that I live by. These are like my like basics, right? It's like <sighs> tapping into myself, making sure I'm aligned with myself, making sure I'm like loving on myself, having fun. Part of self-love is having fun. I'm going to meet a friend right now at the Redmond Cafe. That's fun for me. I'm taking my kids down to Zion again this weekend. We're going to get the adventure guys that came to my retreat to take us repelling. That's super fun. I love that. I love introducing my kids to nature too and seeing them find joy in it. Right? I prioritize time for fun. Fun, be happy, all that. When I eat, I just think protein, fiber, nutrients, nature. I'm not crazy about it. You know, sometimes I have like, well, quite often I have like, like Siete Foods chips or like, you know, almond cracker flour, some with like hummus, like my little treats. You know, I have my built bars and stuff like that. But most of the time I'm like, dude, I need real food. I need like nature in me. Right? You'll be so much more satiated. We had some delicious prime rib last night. I ate, like real food. Some sweet potatoes. So good. So that. And then making sure that I'm killing it in the gym. For me, killing it in the gym is just freaking fun as crap. 
Have you found that yet? It takes a little bit, especially with weightlifting. It's, it, it's not going to feel, if you're new, it's not going to feel super fun because you don't have that nervous system connection to your muscles, that neuromuscular connection, right? So it's a little bit of a learning curve. But once that gets there, it's like so freaking fun to push yourself, get that mentality, make it a set time that you do every day. If you need a recovery day, just walk, but make that your time and then sleep like it's your freaking job. I'm pretty protective over my sleep time, you know? Even with my kids, I've got teenagers. I got a 16, 14, 11, and 9 year old. And yes, they're like, 8 30? We go to bed at 9 30 at dad's house. And I'm like, well, we don't at mom's house. Because <laughs> mom wants to be asleep by 9. So you don't have to be asleep. You can read, you do whatever you want, but you're going to be in your beds. So, like, that mentality, like, take control of your life. And guess what? When you're going to start, I get start getting ready for bed at 8. You're not going to eat late at night. You're going to get all this sleep, your metabolism, your recovery, all of it's going to go up. It makes everything so easy. You wake up feeling like a million bucks. And then guess what you have energy for? The gym. <laughs> you get in that flow. Like, this is what my life looks like. I get up at five, meditate. I do gratitude. Right now I'm doing Tony Child's Gratitude Shift program. It's um, elevated worldwide. I'm redoing that. So I'm really going into gratitude right now again. I've done it before. It's freaking amazing. And then I do my own personal development program and hire. So it takes me about half an hour to do that. Then I go to the gym. While I'm walking forever on the treadmill, I check in with my assistant, my video editor people, my graphic designer, whoever, you know, like I'm checking in with my team, checking emails, sending like confirmations with my clients, all this. I do work stuff while I walk on uphill on the treadmill. I'm just taking care of business like a boss while I'm walking. And then I go lift and it's so fun. All right. Probably make some TikTok, Instagram content, come home, take my kids to school if I have them. If not, shower. I don't allow anyone to have calls with me before 11 a.m. That's a way that I took control over my life because I was feeling stressed in the morning. And I'm like, I don't like that. I need, I want a lot of time in the morning. <laughs> I need time to think and lead my business. So that's what I do. So I made that decision, right? And then, yeah. And then I have do work, kids, whatever. And I go to bed early and then re repeat and make time for fun in there as it comes, right? I like to give myself a lot of open time. It's really important to me. So these kind of practices and when I eat, I think, mm, Bobby, you're going to love this, right? I might throw some sweet potatoes in the oven randomly at some random time or some chicken in the crock pot randomly at some random time. If I'm going to grill steak, I'm going to grill a lot of steak. If I'm going to make burgers, I'm going to make a lot of them. So I have leftovers. So it's easy. When you have like those nutrient dense protein packed foods, like they're as fast, it's like faster than going in takeout. You'll eat that stuff more. So like when you do it, like make a lot. So that's kind of how I flow. Just thought I'd share. Cause like that's gives you a nutshell of like how weight maintenance, body composition maintenance has just become part of my life flow. I don't track my food. I don't, I'm not like psychotic. People are like, what's your workout split and all that. I'm like, just I do have like a basic idea, you know, like I, you know, it's like leg days, Monday, biceps and back is Tuesday, glutes on Wednesday, glutes and abs, Thursday, sh shoulders and triceps, Friday is a hit day, Saturday, Sunday is whatever the freak I feel like, but like I flow with it and I'm not psycho about that. Right. And sometimes you have to, you know, you got to dial it in when you're new, but I give myself a lot of freedom and flexibility within the, that structure that I've created for my life. So just thought I'd share makes things real easy. So, all right, guys, I'm about to hit the Redmond Real Salt Cafe. You know, they have a cafe in, in Utah. It's like dream, dream place for all us health nuts. So about to head up there. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. Bye.